Welcome back to episode 39 of Anime on Draft. I am your host, the guy who likes to talk a lot, uh, also known as mm-hmm. Drew. That's me. Um, I am joined, as always, by my beautiful co-hosts, uh, Alec. Hello. And uh, Rolando. Hi. So we kind Ooh. of have a little bit of a special episode here, guys. Ooh. Um, Ooh. After... After much uh, consideration and deliberation and other words that end in Asian, uh, we have decided... Master. <laughs> yeah, masturbation. Um, <laughs> ooh, we have decided to add um, a fourth uh, co-host to our little program. You guys know him well, but I would like to formally introduce our buddy Mark to Anime on Draft. So let's give him... Uh, a round of applause, guys! A little clap, little, clap, little clap, 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 clap. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So welcome, Much welcome, appreciated. Mark. Uh, so yeah. look forward to uh, having him um, going forward uh, every week here. So That's we're happy a to have you. Permanent resident. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm anime on draft. I'm yeah. excited. He's our resident. You anything, to, anything you want to say, Mark? Anything? Anything at all? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to happy to be a part of the, the program and glad you guys are letting me jump on you, uh, you know, week to week. And uh, first time, long time. It's going to be fun. There it is. Time, yeah. First there time, is. long time. There it is. Uh, so kind of uh, going along those lines, uh, Mark, uh, I'm sure the viewers are, uh, are interested. Uh, what made you interested in joining the group kind of full time with us? Um, you know what, I, I think, uh, you know, being a part of a few episodes here and there, I think it was a lot of fun. Um, and I think I, I feel like I kind of bring like a little bit of a different, you know, viewership, I think, than what you guys normally do. Uh, I'm usually watching like one or two episodes that uh, I know you guys as a group aren't always watching, um, especially for this season, for last season as well. Um, so I think uh, I think it'll be fun to kind of bring up some other, you know, series maybe that other people could possibly be interested <laughs> in and maybe like, you know, more shonen type series that yeah. I, I, you know, enjoy watching. Definitely. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's fun. I think it's be a good time to have another person, you know, on the show and yeah, mix it up a little be bit. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I know um, you kind of, you read a lot of uh, manga as well too. So I think that'll be uh, interesting for our viewership as well. Cause I, I don't read at all. I just, I don't have, time to um, i don't know how to read and, and, I, and i and i and i yeah that's that's the real issue i don't really know how to read um so okay. i look at the One pictures day. like they're kind of nice but i don't I have no idea what's going on um yeah a lot of time that's that's what manga is you know you just look at the pictures and just smile and you know enjoy the nice artwork that there you're, is you're having a, you're having a good time you know exactly I'm that's having a that's, ball. A, that's the don't most important part is whether or not you're having a good time <laughs> <laughs> um, I, know, thank you, uh, Queen. <laughs> I know too uh, we all kind of have our picks in terms of like beer taste uh, but can you kind of explain like a little bit of um, what you like to drink um, on a day-to-day basis are you an IPA guy do you like stouts um, don't say you're a Saison guy because I will fucking fight you oh, uh, <laughs> but, say uh, it Mark say it <laughs> say it I love uh, no I don't I actually am more of an IPA guy a little bit darker there we go there we but go. I do I mean I I just enjoy beer in general I, I think it's it's delicious man like how yeah. could you not like every kind oh, of beer yeah. under the yeah, sun yeah how could you I not like, like all flavors every and colors kind of yeah beer. exactly how could you not like every kind of beer Including these ones, <laughs> including the sour tasting ones. Yeah, um, I, I'm not like a huge fan of like sours. I think those are a little much. But I definitely enjoy like having like a fruity beer every now and then. Yeah. You know, like something with like a little bit of different flavor. Got to mix it up. You know, for yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. Throwing some well, variety. Exactly. You know, we got to encompass you know both parts of the show, and so you know everybody likes beer. You know, especially everybody here likes beer. So you know, good. Uh, Good, we're on the uh, same page with that. Uh, finally, last little bit of introductions. Um, we've talked kind of about what anime we are watching uh, this season, but uh, did you want to kind of say what you were kind of watching, what you're excited about, uh, anything in that regard? Uh, yeah, sure. So I, I know that you guys are covering Ancient Magus Bride, which I'm also covering. I mean, I've also been watching too. I've been 
following this series and you know uh, everything with the OVA that came out, I was really into it, and I'm really really enjoying that series. Uh, there's a few other that I'm others that I'm watching this season that I actually I'm kind of surprised at how many there are. I think I'm just more watching them just because they're entertaining. Um, like Yuru Camp, uh, Place Further Than the Universe is really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, Darling yeah. in the Franx is another one that I've mentioned to Alec and Rolando that I think is very entertaining and kind of funny, but it's not meant to be funny. <laughs> um, Death March to the Parallel World. I know Rolando's watching that one, which I'm kind of interested in seeing where that one's going. Uh, and I think those are, that's about it. I dropped a uh, record of Grand, Kest- Grand Crest War. I couldn't really handle like the terrible script, and I also dropped Citrus because <laughs> that was just way too much. Can't just watch some girls making out like. No, that I can't that watch scared non-consensual. Me off on the first episode, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was too. It was too much for me. Very yeah. non-consensual. Yes, well, exactly. Well, uh, oh, also a uh, Violet Evergarden too. I actually yeah. just caught up like a few days ago after. A recommendation from you guys and I'm enjoying it so far. But we'll talk more about that. Yeah, exactly. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in our pairing. Um, but before we get to that, everybody's uh, favorite section, our beer section. Uh, Alec, uh, you were the chooser, the chosen one of the choosing of the beer. I had the high ground. You, you did. <laughs> you certainly did. Uh, so uh, what, did, what did you pick for us this week? I picked Brother Thelonious. I'm going to read the bottle. Belgian style Abbey Ale. If you go online, it calls it a... Belgian style dark or Belgian dark strong ale on their website. So yeah. And yeah. that's what I picked. Yeah. yeah. It supports jazz. It comes with a little tag says supports jazz mm-hmm. and I'm a jazz supporter. We're all jazz supporters here, especially jazz jazz men. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If yeah. you don't know about the jazz men, uh, look up uh, a couple of previous episodes. Uh, the lore is uh, pretty strong there. Um, <laughs> So let's uh, let's go ahead deep. and uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, take our first sips and uh, tell me what you guys think. It's dark as hell. Mm-hmm. It's actually really cool if you look at it with light on the other side. It's almost like a red cherry color, like yeah. real cherry, not not maraschino cherry. <laughs> and it's really actually a very attractive beer. It's very pretty. It is. And mine has a decent amount of head at the top the head is super bubbly mine dissipated like pretty quick so did mine so did mine as well yeah my, my head was it wasn't didn't last for very long but it, I mean, it was a nice color it was a nice like kind of creamy color mm-hmm. mine's been here for a while I think because I poured it pretty robustly yeah. um, <clears throat> well I mean it's a big bottle and it wasn't coming out very quickly and I got annoyed. So I just kind of <laughs> tilted and you, uh, yeah. When you look at like actual brother Thelonious, you know, on the, on the uh, artwork of the bottle and he's got like a major head going on and he's just like yeah. chilling, dude. He yeah. is, he is all about it. He's just relaxing. <laughs> I love this bottle art. It's, it's so cool. It's great. I love yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> he's got like a halo of like piano keys. Yeah. He's got he's got like the Ray Charles glasses going on, and he's just uh, he's, he's got enjoying a skull in his hands, enjoying. Uh, he's like petting the skull too. He's like embracing it like gingerly. Uh, just he's en- just the enjoying. Shakespeare of jazz, is what they're saying. <laughs> the Shakespeare of jazz. He's, he's like the, the holiest Hamlet of he's jazz. the holiest of chill <laughs> monks right now. <laughs> the holiest of chill monks. Yeah. Yeah. It's made by North Coast Brewing Co. Also, because I didn't mention that before. Yep, it sure is. Uh, so uh, let's take a little sip ski. Tell me, uh, tell me uh, what you think. I like it. I, I this is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, just favorite beers. I was actually considering, uh, you know, nominating nominating this beer nominating. to you guys to, to be rated once. But I'm glad Alec chose it. You're welcome. Yeah. This is um, this is one of the beers that I've like. I always see it at Bevmo, and I'm like always like this artwork is really cool, and I like pass over it. <laughs> um, so I'm glad somebody uh, finally suggested it because artwork's cool. It tastes good to me. It's very nutty. Um, it's not super strong. It's uh, smooth. It's got a. Uh, it's got a little bit of a funny aftertaste for me, but it's like not unbearable. 
I think like that's like my biggest criteria is just like that kind of aftertaste lingering. But it, it's there, but it's not as bad as some of the other ones. But I really like the nutty, dark uh, mm. flavor that it kind of brings. So I got a very I, strong um, mouth feel, very mm-hmm. fizzy. Mm-hmm. You get a lot of fruit in the nose when you, the aroma. I get fruit and like malt, fruit and malt. I don't really get alcohol. It's kind of like a very subdued w- dark red wine smell, but it's not very fragrant. Yeah, mm-hmm. I completely agree. Like I almost really get sip. that like feeling of like I'm drinking like a dark red wine that's kind of fruity, but it's still like a little bit of, like a citrusy almost. But mm-hmm. like at the very end of it, you definitely get that kind of like caramely flavor, but it's I feel like it's a little like stingy. I don't know if that's like a word. I feel like it's it lingers a little bit too long. Yeah, that's that's what I'm getting to. It's like when you drink like a really cold soda, you get like that stingy, like mm. almost like hot feeling. It kind of has a little bit of that. It's a little little overpowering, not the most pleasant of uh, experiences, at least to me. Hmm. I don't know if I really get that. Um, I mean, I get that after sting, but I kind of like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, different strokes for yeah. different folks. Yeah. If, if I if I get that I like expect it to be soda and I want it to be sweet and it's definitely not sweet. Um, it's just how I've been conditioned because um, I kind of like the the bubbliness, but it's like I'm like wait this should be sweet and it's like really not. Um, so it's also got a lot of legs. So mm-hmm. if you yeah, that really sticks to the glass, you take a not. sip. Really, because mm-hmm. if you take if you take a sip, it runs down very slowly. Down the glass. Yeah, I don't I don't see that at all. It might be mine is like flatter or something, but it's like still very carbonated. So I don't I don't know. Um my glass just isn't doing that. So but my head, like like I said earlier, it just like disappeared instantly, so that might be part of the issue. I mean mine did too. So I think your glass is broken. Yeah. No, Do you guys taste a lot of either fig or raisin? I was something gonna, like that. I was gonna say fig. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, because it's it's it tastes pretty figgy, um, figgy pudding, figgy pudding, figgy pudding, and then the smell I do get kind of the typical Belgian. Um, what is it? It's I don't know if it smells like. Excuse me. <laughs> no, it's fruity. I was gonna say maybe there's coriander, but I don't. I don't taste any of the. Coriander. I don't get it. Taste any. Um, Mm-hmm. I, I do get some sort of like figginess and I definitely get caramel. Um, just I get like clove almost. I think you're thinking there's yeah, some spice in there. <clears throat> clove. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very like warm it's beer too. Like I Subdued, feel like this yeah. is like perfect, like in the winter too though. Mm-hmm. Like, just because it's, I don't know, it's a very oh, yeah. warm, get that like hearty feeling. What is the yeah. ABV on this? 9.4. 9. Oh, oh, that's God. a strong beer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it comes in like this big bomber uh, style oh. uh, bottle. So, unless you're also, Mark. it's great. Yeah, unless <laughs> you're me and uh, just opt for the four pack because it was refrigerated. Oh, there, you, there you go. I'm I'm down with it. I would drink a four pack of this. Probably not all in one night. I'd maybe have two. And no, that would yeah. be like that would be like me drinking <laughs> the the dippas the other day because yeah, I just wanted yeah. them gone, and I drank five and. You enjoyed yourself, Ooh. though. You, you enjoyed yourself. Oh, yeah. I had, a, I had a fun night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, with, say, like, going along with that, I, I don't think this is a beer you would session. This is, like, maybe a one one full bomber and you're good or, like, maybe two of the smaller bottles and you're kind of good. Um, but, uh, you know. Yeah, you know what this is, you know this would be good for is just having, you know, like uh, – just like a one beer, like you can get have like a, a good choice of like one beer when it's kind of cold out mm-hmm. and you know, like you just kind of just don't want to drink anymore for the rest of the night or something. So you just have this beer and like you're satisfied. Like it's a yeah. good hearty mm-hmm. beer that will just be, quench your, quench your thirst. It would sure. be good with dinner too. Cause yeah. it's got a lot of complex flavors and it wouldn't get overpowered by a lot of things. So I would have uh, it with dinner and then you could continue on. Yeah. So kind of going along those lines, uh, we talked about like dinner pairings last week. So I mm-hmm. wanted to change it up a little bit and talk about like snack foods that would uh, go well with this. So uh, put you on the spot here, Rolando. Uh, any kind of snack foods that are uh, jumping out that you think would be uh, be good with this? Um, there's always the classic nuts. So mm-hmm. I think uh, definitely a sweet nut like a cashew would be very good with this. 
and then um hazelnuts would also be good mm -hmm. um although uh, hazelnuts aren't really nuts aren't they they're fruit um eh. Eh, they're, crunchy. <laughs> they're crunchy. They're crunchy. They're like crunchy. Nuts. They taste nutty. Um, they're nuts. <laughs> I called a pumpkin uh, yeah. a melon, a melon, like early years. Oh, yeah, you you so call it a melon. We're 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 not we're not very good at like classifying food here. So you know, I would I'll, say I'll, I'll I would it, say a slide. I'd say a pumpkin is farther from a melon than a hazelnut is from a nut. Though. The most <laughs> festive of melons. <laughs> Let me get this melon real quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> carving melons for all of them. Uh, Mark, uh, melons. <laughs> Mark, what are you, what are you thinking for a, a snack food pairing for uh, this kind of guy? Yeah, I definitely think you know, like something like a, a nut and cheese platter would be bomb with this. Mm -hmm. like you guys are combining cheese. what I was going to say. Like, look at you yeah, guys. Yeah, the culmination of the yeah <laughs> tapas. Yeah. Rolando will bring the nuts. I'll bring the cheese, <laughs> and then Drew, you can just culminate them together. Just smash bring, what kind uh, of weird orgy are you inviting me to? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring, uh, <laughs> I'll bring like some cured meats. I think this would go kind of well with like cured meats too. So maybe like a prosciutto or like uh, some salami. Uh, I was thinking salami. You know, something something that has a little bit of a bite to it. Has that kind of wine in the curing process, kind of fatty. <laughs> um, I think that would be really it would go really well with this. Um, Alex, I was thinking like it, it's not it would go in a dinner, but I was kind of thinking it could go as a snack too. You know how sometimes people will put out like, marinated or sautéed mushrooms. I mm, think it would be really mm, good with like sautéed mushrooms, really kind of like, with the cheese platter yeah, on the could, side there. You could do, or you could do like the uh, the stuffed mushrooms. Get some breadcrumbs. Get some mm -hmm. like cheese going in there. Bake them off. I bet that would be really good with this. Yeah, so. and have it as an appetizer sort of deal. I think we all kind of agree, though, kind of like robust foods, because uh, this beer can definitely stand up to them. Um, mm -hmm. They kind through. of cut the richness. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. Yeah, because yeah. I I was thinking I didn't read that it was snacks. So when I came to the show today, I had a, a dinner in mind. So my dinner in mind, just FYI, it was like a um, a beef tenderloin. Yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. Something like mash, that. Mashed potatoes going with those, dude. Yeah, mashed taters. Yeah. Some cheese. Good. On the side there, mushrooms, nuts. And just good. throw it all in there. Yeah. Just throw it in a crock <laughs> pot and let it cook for eight hours and come back later. I don't know about uh, throwing like I don't know about nuts that, and but... cheese in a crock yeah, pot. Yeah, do it. Yeah. You won't. Whatever. You won't. Yeah. yeah, throw that. Throw that in there. See what happens. <laughs> just chug it in there. Throw those hazelnuts in there. <laughs> yeah, do it. Mm. Just chuck them in there with some melons. <laughs> <laughs> good shit good shit some uh, melons making me hungry <laughs> so uh mark I didn't uh, eat today. <laughs> you didn't eat today well good luck. i had cheese 9.4 nine, nine uh yeah. alcohol by volume yeah good, I luck. Had good luck lad good luck lad <laughs> Thanks. um so uh mark since Thanks, you are man. our newest uh, our newest member um <laughs> out of five uh what would you give uh you know brother Thelonious here this is a bad boy you know what? Um, Godfather of soul. The Godfather of soul. Of jazz. Of soulful beer. Of, of jazz. jazz. <laughs> um, you know, I'd probably give it like a maybe four, maybe four point two five, just because uh, they donate to a great cause. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give it a four point two five because of some other outside factors as well. Good. Uh, I think it's a very good beer. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely one of my favorites. Like I said, I actually had this at Disneyland not too long ago. Just because it was cold outside, and that's why I was saying this is a good beer to just get one and like you know chill and walk around. Um, cool. But yeah, four point two five. I think that's my final score. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, right Rolando, uh, what are you thinking? Um, this is one of my favorite beers. I don't know if I mentioned it when uh, we first started the you podcast. Did not. Okay. Well, when I I, I, was, I thought I mentioned it when I said I liked <laughs> Belgian style ales. And, um, this is one of, this is one of the first beers I started drinking, um, back when I branched out and it's always got, you know, like that special place, like one of the beers that you like is different that you first enjoyed, uh, that wasn't like, I don't know, like this and, uh, Pliny the Elder are like two mm. beers that I will always enjoy. And I'm going to give it a four and a half. Mm. Also for the jazz. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, jazz. Go jazz. Go jazz. Uh, Alec, uh, what, uh, what would you rate this guy? 
Um, I'm actually going to agree with Marku Chan here with the 4.25. Uh, I think it's I've had this once before, but it was a long time ago, probably uh, I'd say like five years ago. Um, I had it at a family party. My my cousin is a huge, huge beer fan. And I was just getting into beer around the time, I believe. I think that was when I was taking that class. And um, <clears throat> he uh, he was saying, here, try this one. I thought it was good at the time. Haven't touched it since. Always thought about going back to it, but just tried other stuff. And um, definitely, definitely very good. Um, 4.25 um, is definitely excellent. And it does support a good cause. So, yeah, I think it's a solid four points. The arts. Two five. Supports the arts. Good deal. Uh, for me, I'm going to go a little bit lower than you guys, um, mainly because of kind of the mouthfeel that I get. Because it's um, not an IPA? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I like it. I would definitely drink it. Um, but I'm I'm looking for a little bit more complex depth of flavors. Um, and by complex depth of flavors, I mean I like bitter and citrusy a little <laughs> bit more than this. Um and really the mouthfeel is kind of what's uh, getting it a little bit lower. Like if the mouthfeel is a little bit better, I think I would give it a four. Uh, but I'm going to keep the, keep what stick with my guns, go a 3.75. Definitely an excellent beer. Um, a little bit different uh, from what uh, we normally do. And I definitely appreciate that. And I would drink it again. Um, however, a little bit lower than you guys. So that's, uh, that's my opinions and I'm uh, sticking to it. So. Does any does anybody want to split a bottle of the barrel aged version? Oh I yes, do. please. I okay. do. <laughs> Why don't we just it's, meet it's up? It's expensive. Time. It's like thirty bucks. But yeah, let's meet up one time. Yeah. I'd like to and try it, record yeah. for that. Worth it. Definitely. You can drink it alone, Drew. <laughs> drink the whole bottle. What kind <laughs> of uh, what kind of barrels are aged in? Do you know? Uh, they're bourbon barrels. Bourbon bur- oh, I bet that would be good. That would yeah. add like a, it would make it even more smoky, and it would be like oh, I bet that would be pretty good. So, so I had the uh, Rolando. I had the uh, Russian River Brewing, who also makes uh, Plenty of the Elder. Their Salvation, which is their um, version of a Belgian mm-hmm. strong dark ale, I guess. Uh, and it was barrel aged, and it was amazing. From I, North Coast, I had like yeah, no, yeah. When I when I traveled up to Napa, oh, and it was okay. so good. It was amazing. So I I could only drink a pint because it was like ten point five or something. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you were like, like, oh, I'm fucked. I really up. like North <laughs> I just had sixteen ounces of this. Oh, how much yeah. is in a wine glass? Like six. <laughs> it's really strong. If, if people aren't familiar, I believe North Coast uh, they do um, uh, Old Rasputin. So they also have a barrel aged of that. They do. And uh, which I want to try. We need to do a barrel age sometime, boys. Yeah, we should. We should just have a week of barrel age or t- <laughs> a month of barrel aged beers. That'd start be getting a expensive. really expensive month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. maybe like twenty five dollars. Maybe once a month. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I know uh, it kind of getting off topic, and then we'll jump back. But uh, getting a little bit off topic here. Um, when I was living in Austin, uh, there's this like super super like low-key craft brewery that's like only in austin it's called adelbert's um they're kind of starting to branch out now like when i left there but they have like some barrel aged mm. stuff uh, that is super super good so if anybody's ever in austin um go to like the north side kind of by the domain and uh, you will find adelbert's brewery and i highly recommend almost any one of their beers so with that let's uh let's get back on topic a little bit um the next part of our weekly pairing, we've kind of gotten away from this a little bit, so we want to bring it back. Uh, we're going to be talking about Violet Ever Evergarden. I almost couldn't talk. Um, episode three. What's new? You were just yeah. talking like a like a valley girl. Ever. <laughs> ever. 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 Violet Ever. Ever. Garden. Ever garden. Um, oh my god. This show is kind of the opposite of uh, what a valley girl would be. Um, and I know all of us are <laughs> really, uh, really enjoying this show. But uh, That's good. Rolando, uh, what are your initial impressions of uh, episode three? Definitely super emotional. Yeah, I think honestly, this in terms of execution, this is probably the best one so mm-hmm. far. Um, there. Why? Why? I mean, we yeah, can I just get was throwing out random questions. <laughs> we can, I feel like if we wanted to get in depth on why, we would have to do, do a, a shot. shot. Yeah. yeah. Um, but just in general, I thought that the storyline that they covered was good. 
the majority, I thought that the editing was done very well with the exception of a couple parts that mm. I will just briefly mention. It's like, so like when Violet asks why she's going to school and when Luculia tells Violet why that they should write a letter to the major, it's like those parts had very quick <clears throat> cuts that rhythmically weren't done very well and feel distracting if you're actually watching and not if like so I watched it the second time and I knew what was going on so I wasn't paying attention to the subtitles and so I noticed those more and so hmm. that's why it bothered me but <laughs> they did bother me the first time around too um but I thought the story was excellent uh excellently done um one part in particular that I really liked was the part where there's um, Luculia is talking about her family and how she can't really express how she's just really glad that her brother came back from the war alive. And underneath, it shows her alcoholic brother getting the shit beat out of him. Mm -hmm. He did put up a good fight, but like <laughs> yeah, for a guy, did. there like, were busted was, up hold with a cane, like all of those cutaways, right and then the score that was underneath it. It was yeah. just like it just. Also, the show is just vis very visually stunning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the score was great. I wanted, I wanted to kind of go off of that a little bit. Um, it's really rare that you see in any type of show, not only anime, but just any <clears throat> show, where they can introduce a character for the first time and you feel so emotionally attached to that character. And the way they were able to develop her and develop her relationship with her brother and just how you feel so invested um, in that character. When I first met her, I thought she was going to be super annoying. Like she comes into class, you know, all late and she's like, Oh, sorry, I'm late. And then she ends up, you know, being like really good at uh, being a doll. And then um, she shows like the love for her, not only her family, but her brother who she's like taking care of. And you just get totally emotionally invested. And then they hit you right in the fucking gut. And you know, you see uh, Violet give her brother the letter at the very end and he just starts crying and you're just like, oh, my God, this is so good. Um, so I, I thought I thought that was very impressive uh, for this show, um, just being able to develop her character so well in less than 15 minutes, like and when it's all said and done. Um, I don't know, Rolando Mark or sorry, Alec Mark, do you feel kind of that way or? Yeah, um, I guess I'll I'll step up and give my two cents too. I I mean I really yeah, enjoy the, the the anime so far. Um, I, I think I have a couple like uh, of kind of uncertainties about it. Um, I feel like the the substance of it is not lacking, but I feel like there could be more because I almost feel like I kind of know where this anime is going. And I, I don't know, to me at least, and this is completely like just my opinion, I'm really interested in knowing like what they're like more of her backstory, which I'm sure we'll get. But I feel like th the way that this anime is going is that we're not going to get that much. And I feel like I'm kind of be, I feel like I'm going to be let down in that sense. I, um, I, I see what you're saying, but I think yeah. that. <laughs> It's a little too early to say episode three. I feel like they're no, trying to sure. they're trying to get um, development because like Violet herself is getting development mm -hmm. through even another character being introduced and kind of like a side story. So I think yeah. this is all going to be relevant towards Violet's growth. Yeah, I see that that was I guess that was a problem is that to me that felt it felt too quick. It felt like she was given her status as, you know, graduating too quick, like she she wrote one letter that had two lines on it and all of a sudden like, oh yeah, you definitely have the makings of being a doll. I was like, all right, like I guess, you know, she finally had some feelings. To so be, it was nice. Uh, it was very touching, but I feel to, like the teacher was, I don't know, it was too quick. To be fair, kind of on that point too, like we saw like, I think it was like seven or eight of the girls graduated too and they sucked at like most of the other um, parts of class, like grammar and like words per minute. Yeah, they can't even like read, that. dude. Yeah, like they they, <laughs> they sucked at it, and they graduated because they were able to like convey emotion in letters. Um, yeah. So I kind of feel like they're throwing out that brooch just to like anybody who can like write a letter decently. 
Um, I know there's high demand. Kinda, <laughs> they said it <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and I know that's like kind of nitpicky, but I can I can see like where they're coming from. It's like, well, she passed, so you know she's good to go. Um, I I wasn't really worried, or I wasn't really concerned more on that. I would like I I see why they did it. Um, and yeah, I mean, at the end I of the like day, it's, it's for the it's sake of the story. Probably twelve episodes, and so they kind of have to rush some of the things. So I, I felt that that was a, that was okay. Is it fourteen? It's fourteen. So. Yeah. So right. I mean, I I know it, it does feel rushed that she got the brooch, the brooch, um, the brooch. Um, <laughs> but so this is com- probably going to be this is a hundred percent un completely unrelated to the anime and and why <laughs> they did it in the anime. But if you think about this class as a business then it makes sense why they passed her and why they passed so many people because they're trying to create their this this image that this school is for excellence. And so they're passing the people who can get across the message and then putting them out. But then those people are going to come and be like, oh, wow, I passed and I'm so successful. And then more people come to the school and they make more money. So if you think about it like that, it is kind of <laughs> realistic. <laughs> I'm just <Yeah>. saying. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. That's a fair fair. <laughs> astute opinion yeah i guess it makes sense for sure so but yeah they did kind of pass her very quickly hey, you wrote a <laughs> one sentence letter <laughs> yeah Good got job. him got him. got him he cried Thank you he cried. <laughs> he cried so he won. was drunk and he got his ass beat and he cried after a letter <laughs> oh man Thank you i'm glad you're alive <laughs> <laughs> um nah. did you so i want i wanted to see like did you guys while you were watching notice that violet didn't bite her glove off when she wrote the letter, though. Oh, well, I guess the, she did sec- it. the, the second when she wrote so, the letter for him. Yeah, so when she wrote, they just kind of showed letter. her sitting there, though. Like they show. No, I didn't. But that's they, actually very interesting. Do you think that's like uh, it, significant as a, yes. her well, character? Now that now huh. that you mentioned yeah, that, that it's definitely super significant because it's showing that she's going from like this robotic form to like this more yeah. fluid human like she's not a robot she's not this tool she's actually someone who can have empathy and you know understands emotion so i'm i'm glad you pointed that out Rolando, because i didn't think about that but that's definitely huge for her uh for her character development for sure yeah because so like maybe they go ahead be, because every time they've shown her previously getting ready to type she's like put her glove to her teeth and bit down and pulled her glove off that way but yeah. they show her close up about to do it and then she rethinks it and then she decides <clears> to pull her glove off with her other hand. And I thought that was like super significant because it's kind of like her <laughs> journey towards becoming more human. Mm-hmm. And rather than doing something as barbaric as biting the glove off, she Because it's easier, I'm sure. Yeah. Like it's she's doing something that's way more difficult for her, but is more human like, mimicking mm-hmm. human action kind of like it's kind of like because hey, like she's trying to learn normally? like human emotion, yeah. but she's not just she's tool not to be used. Yeah. She's not like so, exactly human. So it's I thought it was like a kind of similar parallel to like Elias and Magus Bride, who is trying to mimic and like emulate humans to understand mm-hmm. them. I kind of feel like she was doing a similar thing. I know we're not going to so talk about the- uh, Magus Bride, but uh, they both Elias and Violet kind of have the same journey of trying to understand human emotions. Um, and they're both like kind of similar in, in that respect. And they're both learning from the people around them um, and growing in that sense. And so I think like, we'll talk about Magic Bride in a shot format, but um, Elias is like understanding like different emotions, anger, love, um, you know, all these different emotions and same thing with Violet. She's trying to understand love. She doesn't really understand it yet, but she's like now understanding like empathy. Um, you know, I guess, I guess kind of love, like love for, you know, um, other, other people and, but not like the necessary like romantic love. Um, so I'm sure we'll see that development. I stare through Bonsai, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bring out the love uh, vibe. Do it. Any uh, Anything else you guys want to add, Alec? I know I kind of cut you off a little bit. 
Yeah, dick. No, yeah. I was just gonna throw something out. <laughs> we we were talking about the her getting the brooch and it feeling rushed. So now that Rolando mentioned the the glove thing, perhaps you could almost kind of see her getting that brooch as the sh- a sh- the show giving a more um, substantial indication of her evolution away from robot to human. I guess like as a turning point in, you know, that sort of thing. That's actually the moment where I said, what a nice lady while eating Cheez-Its is when she gave her <laughs> while the brooch. Eating Cheez-Its. <laughs> yeah, I was nice lady. eating Cheez-Its. Yeah, I was, no, I was actually, I, so I watched the show right before, the, right before <laughs> we're recording right now. <clears throat> so I actually think it'll be beneficial to go back and watch it again because I was also half listening to um, Mark and Drew in the background talking about random shit like, shoving shit down a toilet or whatever <laughs> from reddit and things like that just random stories and i'm just i'm trying to concentrate on watching the show and i'm hearing oh he shoved it with his foot and i'm just like trying not to laugh <laughs> and so by the end of the show i started getting really into it and i was just indiscriminately eating so many cheez it's i killed so many cheez it's today but um um where are you going I with don't, this, Alex? I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I Jesus. lost my... Oh, so it'd be good to watch it again, but um, now that you mention it, yeah, that would be interesting with the brooch, and there we go. But that's the point, actually, where I really got into it. That was a good part of the show. That's where I was going with it. Boom, I came back to it. You came back. No food and strong beer. You came back. It was really hard to follow your own train of thought. Jesus Christ. You came back. Came move back. on, please. Move all on. in all, this is a very... I don't know. It's a very beautiful anime. I, I Love it. It's great. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. we got we got uh we also got like a lot of accessories kind of going on you know magus bride you know uh elias gets like a new uh, bolo tie hashtag philip rivers um <laughs> and you know we have uh, violet getting a brooch so you know jewelry accessories uh going on uh, this week in anime uh but let's uh, christmas dude let's uh yeah let's kind of move on um we mentioned magus bride a, a couple of times uh, we don't feel that we have enough time to like amply cover this uh mm. this in this format so we're going to do a shot um independent <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna do disgusting <laughs> so Jeez, so professional dude. of me um i could turn I, around i couldn't i couldn't hold <laughs> it back boys i couldn't hold it back uh the belgian so strong sorry. Yeah, is so strong. sorry for our host the, the, Bel- so the belgian is so strong um but anyway um so we uh anyway mag is right we will talk about that individually in a shot um mark is going to kind of be handling our social media accounts so uh look out for uh for that on our social media twitter etc um but kind of moving on, um, a couple different <clears throat> other anime we wanted to talk about. I just wanted to uh, briefly mention in this happy hour segment about uh, Hakata Tonkotsu Ramen. I know I talked about the first episode a little bit. Um, I wasn't sold on the first episode. Um, I thought it was going to be kind of boring. But now that they've kind of introduced all the characters and we see how they come together. Um, and so we're on episode three now. Uh, they kind of come together and we have like this uh unifying plot and we had this like unifying like conflict uh the show's gotten really good so i was just going to tell you guys go watch it it's like get through the first couple of episodes meet all the characters and see all their different like timeline sort of deal and watch it kind of come together um i was talking to mark so much investment though i have to watch a couple of episodes (laughs) it's hard no no, I, i know i know it's hard but i was talking to mark and mark's like you were telling me you were real big into like original Jura Ra 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 um, before like it started to like it was like after second season they started introducing other characters it kind of became bad. Uh, this yeah, kinda, the story started becoming convoluted. Yeah, and but. and that's the thing I didn't like about it. And I thought this was going to be the same way, but uh, they've kind of drawn it back together, mm-hmm. and it it reminds me of like the first and second season of Jura Ra 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 Ra. Um, okay. And it, it's kind of come, it's kind of come back to that, and it's like the characters are really good. Each of them is unique. So Each good. of them is um, you're interested to see kind of what goes on, and there's an overarching story and conflict that they're all trying to resolve, which is really cool. So sick. Highly, I'll highly try to pick it up sick, again. Dude. I think I'll, I'll I'll give it another shot. I, yeah. Like I said, I, I watched okay. the first episode while I was at work, and I wasn't really paying attention that much, and then. The whole cross dressing thing was like, um, <laughs> what's going on? Like, this Drew, makes make no choice. sense at all. But yeah, I'll give it a shot. Um, yeah. I'll try it out. Drew, so, you have to make a choice. What, what's week. my choice? 
Okay, so either I start watching this, or maybe one day I watch. Um, You're Monica never gonna you watch that? Monica maybe, Tari, so it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe one, one day. day. Maybe one day. Maybe, <laughs> maybe one day. One maybe day. one day I'll watch a hundred and four. I'll, I'll say. I'll maybe say for the sake day. of the show, watch watch Tonkotsu Romans. <laughs> um, I really hope that you guys will all watch Monogatari. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, it's so hard dude but i would love you guys if you did it it would make me so happy um (laughs) (laughs) i've seen the first two seasons and that's that's it i I don't really know if i have any inclination to want to keep going no i just i don't know if i want to have that you know it's a lot i keep saying that it's a lot you just got to do it 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 ends and you and you just like, doesn't want to have the stigma of being uh, a person who's watched they, that show. If they remove Hanekawa from the show, then maybe I will continue watching it. Which do one's Hanekawa? Do you want the, me to? Main... Do you want me to spoil things? No, I don't want you to spoil it. <laughs> but that is the sole <laughs> nice. reason why I fucking fell behind because I was like, "Fuck, I hate this character," and I well, already she... suffered through the fucking OVAs. No spoil. No spoils. All right. All right. I'm not gonna say anything. I suffered <laughs> through the OVAs that she was a part of, and then I have to fucking watch like f- what eight Hanazawa episodes get, of it's her. Hanazawa, Hanazawa I, d- Kana, I know dude. I like her as a voice actress, but I just don't like that character. <laughs> I feel you on that one. Speaking, uh, speaking to uh, voice actors and actresses, that's kind of what our next uh, part of Happy Hour is about. Unless you guys <laughs> wanted to mention any other shows, um, segue that we're going um, segue. Alec, you're watching Place Further Than the Universe, right? Yes, I am. Can we talk about how much of uh, a bitch her friend was? I hate the show, by the way. <clears throat> which I've only seen the which first friend? episode, so I don't know which friend you're talking about. All right. Well, one, Wait, one of the hang friends on, hang on, is... Hang on. What uh, is, did you watch, did you watch this, the last episode, episode five? I'm looking, I'm looking. Um, I hate the show. They're, the they're, they're, no, they're, they're, yeah, no, I haven't. Like, you can't say anything. They're, they're planning to go to Antarctica, and one of their friends is like a complete bitch. But I haven't seen see episode five, only episode four. All right. We'll watch episode five and then you'll feel me. Definitely. Okay. All right. Which which friend? Is is it um uh, is it uh a I'm gas station you. or liquor store friend? No, I don't no, know what no. to call her. Convenience no. store? There we go. The one of like the, the very first girl that you meet. Oh, the school chick? Yeah. Or wait, or the the um the one who wants to go to Antarctica originally? No, no, no. The other girl who's going to school with with her, who the, like, like friends main her. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. But yeah, cool. that's about it. I'll check it out. That show sucks. But otherwise, this show <laughs> oh is God. actually excellent. It's this really show, good. It is really good. The first four episodes have been really good. <clears throat> I've enjoyed it. Yes. He uh, yeah. he's making a decision on it without watching anything. Kind of like me and Monogatari. I watched the first episode, and I'm just. <laughs> I watched the first forty five seconds of Monogatari. <laughs> <laughs> I it, know what it's and, about. And then you got stapled, and then uh, the show ended. Um, but anyway, any any other shows you guys want to cover before we get into uh, kind of the topic I was uh, starting to mention or whatever? Nope. Nah. All mm-hmm. right. So uh, voice actors. Let's get into it. Yep. Uh, voice actors and actresses, uh, English, mm. English or Japanese. I gave you guys the option. Um, oh. I guess oh, I'll. I that. <laughs> Thanks, wise leader. I guess I'll uh, I'll kind of lead the way. Um, both of these characters are Monogatari characters. They're not oh, my. Wow. They're, 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 so, so. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So wow. they're they're the those oh, characters so surprised. Those characters that they play uh, in Monogatari are not actually like <laughs> my favorite roles that they have, but I'll kind of mention them. Uh, the mm-hmm. first one is Chiwa Saito. Um, she in Chiwa Monogatari. Saito. In Monogatari, she is uh, Hitagi Senjo Bahara, which is Aradagi's main love interest. Uh, Aradagi Gun. Yes, Aradagi. Um, mm. But the main reason I like her um, not OP enough. She, she has she has this like very uh, similar style H, in a uh, in a lot of roles that she plays, where she's very kind of like monotone, but then she can like turn on the emotion, and you're just like, yeah, this is <clears> awesome. <throat> Uh, but the role that I really like her in is uh, not in Monogatari, as uh, you guys probably watched, uh, but or you guys probably guessed, but it's mm-hmm. actually in uh, Madoka Magica. She plays Homaru uh, in that. Oh, and I, I, I love... Homura. What did I say? <laughs> you said Homaru. Homaru. Nine, nine Homaru from The Simpsons. Nine, 9.4 uh, alcohol by volume. But uh, yes, I love, I love her character in uh, Madoka Homura. Magica. Hmm. To see okay. her, to see her developments, like from this stoic bitch who you fucking hate, to what she went through, 
uh, to try to save Madoka and and all these things. Like, oh, just just love it. So she uh, she's one of she's one of my favorite. Um, I I mentioned earlier I like uh, Hanazawa Kana. She does a ton of, of voice acting as well. So those are kind of like one and two for me. Mm-hmm. Um, my male voice actor is uh, Takihito uh, Kaiyoshu. Um, he's been in everything you can fucking imagine. Um, he's so many anime. If you go to my anime list and kind of see what he's done, um, he's done it all. A couple of distinct roles that I like him in. Uh, one of the more recent one that I've watched is Jojo. Uh, he is <laughs> he is D, he is Dio, and he is the voice that everybody when you hear his voice, you're like, that's fucking Dio, that's fucking Dio. But that's not why I like him. Um, I like him for multiple. <laughs> I like him for multiple other roles. Uh, he is. Um, in uh, Utena, he is the student council president. Um, God, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Um, Toga. He is Toga in Utena. Um, in uh, Shokugeki no Soma, he is Gin, the um, leader of, or the graduating class, the bald dude who's like naked in the bath with Soma in uh, nah, the first you season. Mean first seat Gin. <laughs> first seat in the bathroom. Gin. First yeah, seat dude. Gin. <laughs> in the bath. Um, oh sick dude <laughs> he uh oh. <laughs> um he's in he's in like attack on titan he's in struggling the, he, one piece he's in what else is he in <clears throat> samurai seven samurai champlo samurai jack um he is in rosario vampire i'm just like scrolling up the list he's in psychopaths Pokemon. Psychopath was good. Uh, he's he's in, in Pokemon. So he's I in, like Psychopath. <laughs> he's in uh, he's in Monogatari. Uh, he's actually a very like subset character uh, that you guys have never seen because you won't watch it. Um, You're like right. I, <laughs> like I said in uh, One Piece, he's uh, one of my favorite characters, uh, Kuzan, who is uh, the guy with the ice powers. Uh, he ate the ice fruit. Kujo? Um, Kuzan. Um, oh, the dog. Nice. <laughs> So he's he's in One Piece. Uh, he's in Evangelion. Um, so I'm I, I could go on forever. He's in a million different shows. Um, but definitely don't if if you guys have watched him in JoJo and you're like, oh, it's fucking Dio. Oh my god, it's Dio. Like, yes, he is Dio. Dio is a great villain. Uh, Dio is great in JoJo. However, he has tons and tons and tons of other roles. So I, I implore you to go watch. Uh, other shows um, that he is involved in because he is a great uh, VA. Um, so let's go. Let's go with Alec. Alec, who are your favorite voice actors and actresses, and and or your favorite characters that they voice? So uh, so mine's gonna be easy because I actually don't ever pay attention to uh, voice actors or actresses. I'm so sorry you guys put in a ton of work. If any of them listen to this, it's not because I don't think you do a good job. It's because I'm oblivious and honestly, I just don't care. <laughs> he um, care. So I just he don't care. care. I don't. I'm one of those people. Shame. Where people. People Poor go shame. to a place. People Poor go shit. to a place and and they get all starstruck by by celebrities of different kinds. I just don't care. In the end, they're just people, and just what if do your Kate job. Upton walked down the you street? do a good job. Awesome. What if Kate Upton walked? I wouldn't be starstruck. I would just never mind. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> um, totally. I know so, what you're gonna say. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> he wouldn't so, be starstruck. He would just stare. <laughs> so that was that um, was the PG version. <laughs> yeah, that was the PG <laughs> version. The very very PG version. Um. So the voice the the people i picked i i just looked up characters i liked and then found out who they um who who acted who did the voice acting for them the i'll start with the female character um because the male characters really just be me um so i picked the the female character i picked um let me find it i have it here somewhere um <clears throat> oh shit i lost it um does anyone know who did the voice acting for asuna in yes um, yeah, her. Uh, she was good. Tomotsu Haruka. <clears throat> yeah, I thought she did an excellent job. She's an at um, doing she's Asuna. Everything. I looked her yeah. up and I was like, "Dang, she's pretty cute." So I was like, "Hey, I like her." So um, <laughs> Are we talking about sword online Asuna. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So I thought she did a good job. Um, I because I liked that character, so I looked up the voice actress. Um, I don't know what else she's been in. 
but a I lot. thought she did a, a good lot. job. Yeah. A lot. So she's been in a lot. So clearly lot. I made a good choice. She's clearly excellent. <clears throat> the other person I looked up was the um, uh, voice actress for uh, Rem from ReZero just because I really liked the character. Um, but anyways, uh, the male voice actor I picked was, uh, what, shoot, what's his name? Uh, uh, Nakata Joji. <laughs> Um, yeah. from he, he was uh, Kire <laughs> Kotomine from oh, um, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about from from and, Fate okay, Zero, yeah. and I picked him purely only. because of because one line because your god was wishing you, because my god is wishing me, <laughs> my god is wishing me. So I picked him because of because that line, no, but his, just his voice so is also like good. super, it is. Like, it's pretty badass, badass. His voice is really good. He Lana, does have you, a really good voice in that whole show. In that him saying, "My God is rich in me," like <laughs> you know, like right now. <laughs> yeah, right now, right at yeah, just, this moment. Just pull up right the pull now. up a clip of it real <laughs> quick. Wait, wait, wait. Pause, like pause for. Hold on, wait. Here it is. Oh my heart yearns, wishing me. All right, how would you think? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, anyways, I picked him because. Because because of that, he because does have a that. good voice because also, but I was trying to find a male um, person, like a uh, character I really liked. But the first thing that popped in my head was my God is wishing <laughs> me. And then and then I went from there. So that's, that's those are great. my choices. Um, let's move on to someone who probably has more educated decisions than I do. Mark, <laughs> how yeah, about I go? Yeah, yeah, Mark, yeah. Go, go for it. Go for yeah. it, Mark. All right, so uh, let's see. For male actors, male voice actors, I chose Rikia Koyama for his role in Kekai Sensen. He plays Klaus von Reinhardt, and he has a pretty badass voice, too. He actually also has an, a role in the Fate series. He plays Emiya Kiritsugu, who is, um, like, I guess, one of the main characters in or the main character in the Fate Zero series. Oh, you mean you mean the main character in Fate? <laughs> yes, that's the one. Yes, <laughs> um, I, I I actually you know really really enjoy his his uh, voice acting. I think the fact that he has to say like I think they're like German words. I think it's German. I don't know. They're like pretty made up sounding in Kekai Sensen. Is pretty <laughs> they're badass. made up sounding words. So you're saying German is a made up language. <laughs> No, they definitely are just, they sound pretty damn made up. Like there's like random syllables that just don't sound like any language. Like it makes no sense. You, you have to watch it. You have to watch the series. But he makes it sound mm. badass because they're like his ultimate moves or something. And then, yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, he also plays uh, Yukihira's father in the, uh, in Shokugeki. Oh, Jorichiro. Yeah, Dude, he yeah. has that is a good voice. Tons of mm -hmm. tons of good yeah. BAs. Shoki Geki's tight. Yeah, yeah, Shoki Geki's really good. Yeah, it's, oh it's full so, of really good BAs. <laughs> so, like, I was gonna say, like, from Fate Zero, like, he was the guy because, like, he's got kind of like a pretty unique voice, too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely. My actual wait, did you say your female one yet? No, no. Uh, so, all right, yeah. so female, really quick, is uh. I was kind of torn. I, I think my my first instinct was to go with um, Celtie's voice actress from Dora Dora. She's good. Mm -hmm. Sawashiro Miyuki, who's been in a bunch of oh, other series okay. too. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, she actually was in a Monogatari series as uh, Surugu or Kanbaru Surugu. Yeah, yeah. She's um, been in a ton of anime. Yeah, and then I really liked her role in uh, Noragami as Bishamon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, who's like one of the main. I don't know. I she's where you're at first. The, the, the mature, the mature sounding woman voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She's she's, but she. I don't know. She just sounds hot, man. I enjoy it. <laughs> she, she, plays, she plays. She plays a lot of lesbians. I mean, <laughs> which one did she play in Noragami? The uh, Bish Bishamon, the the blonde haired chick. The chick she has oh, like the tiger. A ton of. She has oh. the harem of different yeah. spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking Her. about. Uh, but uh, my that other choice was great. um just step away. Uh, let me see. I had it here. Uh, Aya Hirano. Um, because I think she sounds really cute in the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> I hate Triggered. that show, by the way. Right? Right? No. No, no, not. By not the way. Hate. By the way. Saying, oh my god, to Rolando. All right. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> um, I think, you know, in terms of Japanese male voice actors, definitely like, <clears throat> uh, Koyama Rikia's like 
a very good one just because like he has a kind of unique voice. Um, but I'm actually going to go with an English voice actor. Um, Ooh, Trey Barker. Matt, Matt Mercer? Yes, Troy Burt. Um, Troy Baker is actually who I was going to select. <laughs> um, <laughs> and in consequence, Matt Mercer, because he knows how to emulate Troy Baker's voice very well. Um, but like, yes, Troy Baker, like he's in a lot of video games and um, yeah, he and used to do. He used to do a lot of voice acting in like anime to like English dubs, but. Um, in particular, I do enjoy his roles, especially in The Last in of Us. The Last of Us. No, oh, not yes. in JoJo. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think he's a very talented voice actor. And like he kind of went from like a small time voice actor to and he shot up a lot. And I think a lot of that was in part with... Um, you know, like doing stuff in Persona and doing stuff with The Last of Us. He's very talented. Yeah. The Last um, of Us was great. He also played Batman. I'm just seeing here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he yeah. He fucking played Batman. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. He was um, the guy in a Bioshock Infinite as well. Yeah. yeah. And um, so for female oh, voice actors. I said I need to beat it. I've played it. I just haven't beat it. <laughs> I <laughs> didn't beat it. I, I started like, it, right and then I got, and then I died, and I said, "Fuck this shit," and I stopped playing, and I haven't played since. Go, go you need on, to, you need to the, finish that game, dude. Oh, um, okay, so for female voice actress, um, I uh, there's a lot, but I'm gonna select two that haven't been said yet. Um, so one of them is definitely Ito Shizuka because she does a lot of like the very like playful flirty characters that mm -hmm. has been around for a while. And she's like, so if you're not familiar with her, she definitely plays Rindo in Shokugeki. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she plays like Hinagiku in, um, Hayate, um, no Gotoku. So, um, she's got like a specific voice type that she's kind of cast into, but it's a very like, I, I like the the style of she's voice good acting. At it. Yeah. She's very good at it. And then mm -hmm. the other one is so I'll preface this with I will always think that this voice <laughs> actress is very talented because if you watched um fuck, what's the name of the show? Let me look it up real quick. But it's um uh Saori Hayami and um let me find out what the show is. Um. Oh, she's been in a lot of stuff too, right? Yeah. So, like, she's in a lot of stuff, but the yeah. specific role I'm thinking of is um, glass lip. No, not <laughs> glass lip. Because <laughs> she's up. on here. It comes out every time. It comes. It out is. Every it time. is definitely not glass lip. Yeah, she was, was great glass lip. No. Um. Fuck. Where is it? Oh, it, dude. Drew in a in a rabbit cafe. She's Aoyama Blue Mountain. Just oh, I love to. she I played. Love her. I love her in that. Yeah, I, I know that, and she does that type of voice like in most of the anime. She does like older adults, like sophisticated, and then like very like subdued, sexy. Like that is that is the voice. Mm, that not she all does. the time, she, but she was uh, Shoko in Koei no Katachi Rolanda. Oh, okay, so that's also yeah. That for sure. she did a good job playing a deaf person. Um, mm -hmm. So the show I'm thinking of is Ino Battle, um, Wa Nichi Jo Ke no Nakade, which um, there's this specific scene, and if people are very like into anime, if they're weebs, whatever, like <laughs> um, if if they've seen this anime, they know exactly which scene I'm talking about. <laughs> and her character just goes on a fucking rant for like a minute straight, like calling the main character on his shit. Um, Is because she cooking? Like, yes, she's cooking for him. Mm, and I've then, seen the scene. What? You're watching the scene? <laughs> I've seen the scene that you've talked yeah. about. She yeah. just goes off for like fucking like two minutes straight. Yeah. And it is like so there's so many like it's like so like word packed. And she, mm -hmm. apparently, like on Twitter, they said that she did it in one take. 
Oh shit! Wow! <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit! If you if she did that in one take, she's got some fucking talent. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah! Holy crap! <clears throat> yeah, I've I've seen that scene. I think I don't. Th- I haven't seen the show. I think it was because you sent me the scene. I'm pretty sure we were I did. talking about something was, at one it point. It was fucking god. And I remember watching it and I was like, oh my god, because she just she talks for a long time and. It's very quick. Without pause. She talks, yeah, with no pause. It's, it's like when you watch one of those, or when you listen to one of the um, uh, rap songs or with someone. Or something, yeah. yeah, like uh, a Twista or Busta Rhymes, and you just hear. Oh, Busta. Yeah, yeah Busta. not that fast, but, no, but like she, as impressive. She can flow like because, Busta. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she can flow, she like, can flow like, like Busta Rhymes. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Damn. So. Good shit. Good shit. Yeah. Nice. I, I support that one too. That's a yeah. good one. <laughs> well, hell yeah. Um, kind of a little different segment that we did here, but uh, I, I had a lot of fun kind of looking at my VAs and, you know, seeing like, oh, yeah, she did this role. Oh, yeah, he did this role. So I, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, so look forward to more of that kind of in the future. Uh, but we were at like <laughs> max time here. Um, just uh, just uh, look forward in the next couple weeks. Uh, we're because we're at four uh, members now. We're going to kind of be switching up the host every week now. Um, beer rotation is going to kind of be the same. We're just throwing Mark in the mix. Um, I think next week I'm uh, I'm picking beer and uh, Alec is hosting or no Mark is hosting. No Mark is Mark hosting. Is so, so Mark so Mark is going to host. So uh, look right forward to that. Fire. Um, I'm going right. to, I'm going to pick another IPA and I'm going to pick another like $18 IPA and everyone's going to be mad at me. Please and then don't. no one's going to buy it. <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. Then. I'm going to go look, I'm going to look at the price. Beer, I'm going to get up to the front of BevMo and they'll be like, that'll be $16. I'll say, all right, you know what? I'm going to walk away. <laughs> you like, have I'm a great this evening. Bottle of whiskey instead. You, I'm going to, I'm going to go get this instead. Um, and then, and then we'll have the podcast. Hey, what are you guys drinking? I'm drinking a uh, 12 water. year. Uh, twelve year blended. It's delicious. <laughs> the Chivas, <laughs> the Chivas, <laughs> Chivas Royale, um, which I, I have. I, I did. I did apologize profusely for that, so I'm going to try not to do that again. Uh, <laughs> I would but, buy uh, it, Drew. I th- buy th- it. Th- thank you, I Mark. bought it. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, but uh, with that said, uh, please check us out on uh, WordPress, AnimeOnDraft.wordpress.com. Um, that's where you're going to find most of the updated links. Uh, same with SoundCloud. Um, just search for anime on draft. You're going to find us there first before anywhere else. Uh, we're getting, we have a more consistent schedule now that we have a little bit more help. Um, so we're going to try to get these, uh, episodes out uh, pretty consistently here. Um, not only on SoundCloud, but on YouTube and iTunes as well. And we have um, a schedule. Exactly. Exactly. And so, uh, and Mar- like I mentioned before, Mark is going to kind of take over our uh, social media account. So probably, um, you'll see United- activity on it. You'll see more exactly. activity yeah. there. Well, yeah, you'll yeah. see some more posts on Instagram. <laughs> exactly. so, like, yeah. we're I've been Facebook. trying my best, people. I'm sorry, but Instagram just died. I couldn't yeah. do it. And so, uh, <laughs> like, we're recording tonight, so uh, take a look out. Mark uh, might mention the beer, just, mm-hmm. like, saying that we're recording, uh, different uh, things like that. So keep a lookout everywhere. Uh, but with that said, uh, Mark, welcome. Uh, we're super happy to have you. Uh, thanks for coming on board. Uh but, Thanks for uh, jumping on us. Yeah. Any 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 last words uh, from uh, from any of you guys? Woo! Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me, and thanks for uh, welcoming me. It's uh, it's been fun, and it's gonna be even funner. Yeah, we're, thanks we're for jumping. Close. It's been we're it's been <laughs> real, and it's been fun, but uh, it hasn't been really fun with you. Please Mark, so. stick with us for a uh, first time, long we're, time. We're getting uh, we're getting close first to that year. We're getting close time. to that year. So I uh, look forward uh, to that. Uh, yeah. But with that said, uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.